All right, and uh, the plane decided to go over us. Let's just wait a second. I mean, listen, we talking about practice, not a game. All not right. a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Everybody gonna tell you something different. Not a game. You ain't gonna go far. Not the game that I go out there and, and die for. You ain't gonna be shit. And play every game like it's my last. Not Make the game. Feel like they drive. We talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? And we talking about Don't practice. Don't let nobody drown you. I know I'm supposed to be there. I know I'm supposed to leave by Don't exam. Nobody I know that. Drown. And I'm not, I'm not shit. Hey guys, my name is Julian with Alltech Solar here in San Diego and uh, what I'm going to be teaching you today is how many panels you can get onto your existing electrical panel without having to do any kind of upgrades, derate the panel, or even install an RMA. Alright, so it's really easy to figure this out. You can do the math in just about 30 seconds. You're going to go out to the electrical panel, you're going to open up the door, and you're going to look at the spec sheet that's hopefully there, and you're going to look for where it says the max rating. This is the first number you need. Once you locate that, you look at all the breakers and you look for the main breaker, which is usually gonna be the biggest one with the highest number. And you're gonna write down that number as well. And then the third step is you need to just kind of take an overall look at uh, all of the breakers and see are there any available areas so I can put a new breaker because when you install solar there's going to be a new PV breaker that is installed into the existing electrical panel. We, c we may have to double some up which is possible uh, but hopefully there's a spot that's ready to go. All right, step two, you're going to take that max rating that you just discovered. Like I said in this example it was 100 amps. You're just going to multiply that by 120 percent. So as you can see down here 100 times 1 1.2 is 120 amps. So step three, you simply are gonna take that 120% figure and you're gonna subtract what the main breaker rating is for it. So for example, in this case, since it's a 100-100, we're gonna take that 120 and subtract 100 from it and we're gonna be left with 20 amps. Now this is the maximum size amperage PV breaker that you can fit in the electrical panel without messing with it at all. So how do we figure out how many panels we can fit in a 20 amp PV breaker. All right, and step four is simply figuring out which microinverter you're gonna be using. Now step five is taking your selected microinverter's amperage and timesing it by 1.25 to find its max continuous load. So in this case, if we're using the IQ7 Plus, it's gonna be 1.21 times 1.25, that equals 1.5215 amps per microinverter. All right, so once you calculate that figure, you're gonna actually divide it into what the maximum amperage PV breaker that we discovered earlier. So in this case, it's gonna be 20. So we're gonna divide 1.5125 into 20. This comes out to be 13.22. Obviously, we can't have 0.22 of a panel. So the maximum amount of panels we can fit in this box without changing it is going to be 13 uh, panels if we're using the IQ7 Plus microinverters. All right, so I'll give you a pretty real world example. You show up to a house, the family has a 100 amp, 100, uh, 100 amp max main breaker, 100 amp uh, main service, and they need 20 IQ7s. So what do we do? We're gonna be upgrading it to a 200, 200, and if we redo the math here, we'll find that a 40 amp PV breaker is the maximum that we can fit in that box. Now, without thinking too hard, back in the other example, if we could fit 16, IQ7s onto a 20 amp, then we're gonna be able to fit 32 uh, IQ7s onto a 200-200. All right, so let's say you show up to the house, they have a 200-200, which initially you know gets you feeling good because that can hold most systems, but you go through their usage and you discover that they're actually gonna need 34 IQ7 pluses, which is beyond the limit of what a 200-200 can hold. So what are we gonna do? All right, so the easiest thing to do is going to be what we call a D-rate. So we're gonna take that main breaker and we're gonna actually downgrade it from a 200 to a 175. Now, what does this do to our equation? Let's redo it again. Instead of subtracting 240 uh, minus 200, now we're gonna be going 240 minus 175, which actually allows us to now put in a 65 amp PV breaker. All right, so for the last real world example, let's say you show up to the house, they don't really need a bigger panel because they're not using that much um, power more than 100 uh, amps as a main service panel is, is going to require for and um, everything looks fine except for the gas meter is right below and so as you probably know in sdg e territory if your gas meter is right below the electrical panel and you want to do an electrical panel upgrade there's a good chance that you're going to have to relocate it completely which now makes the project uh, not two thousand dollars but two thousand plus uh, whatever the contractor wants to move it. Each case is a little bit different. Could be 500, could be a couple grand. Um, now, there is a workaround around this. It's called an, uh, an RMA or a renewable meter adapter. And this is kind of a small sub panel that
that we can order SDG&E to install for you. And this is only about $1,400. Um, and it kind of is a workaround because we can leave the existing electrical panel there and we don't have to move anything and, and we can get your solar installed no problem.